Hi everyone and welcome back to our AI series. In this episode we're going to start taking a look at smart objects. Now smart objects are a new tool we have brought in with Unreal Engine 5 and basically we go through it more in the video but basically they allow us to have AI assign themselves to slots in the environment so that another AI won't take that slot away from them. So it's similar to like how you want people to sit on benches and chairs and, and use other things. So we're going to go through in this video the uh, basic setup and getting started with smart objects and talking about what each bit does. Um, and then in later videos in, in, in sequence, we'll go through and implement a seating uh, AI and then go into a bit more advanced stuff afterwards. So let's check out the uh, smart objects. So first of all, let's discuss what smart objects are. So a smart object is a object you place in your environment and it has designated spots on it. And let's say it's a bench, okay? And this bench has two spaces available. The AOA looking for a place to sit will look for that bench and go sit on it. But what they're actually gonna do is now reserve that spot that they're gonna sit in, meaning that any AI that is looking for a seat will see that that spot has been taken and will choose a different one. So this really makes your AI feel a bit more alive and interacting with objects in a lot more interesting way. So let's go about and talk about how you start this up. So the first thing you need to do is enable the plugins. So you go to edit plugins and you want to enable two plugins in, behave, uh, in particular. The first one is AI behavior and you want to do AI behaviors and you want to turn uh, those on. So turn that on. Yep. And we also want to turn on smart objects. And I've already got mine turned on here. Okay. So turn those both on and then you'll restart Unreal. And wait for that to come back up. There we go. And that is it. So now if I go into my content explorer, I'm going to go into a new folder I've made called smart object. And I'm going to create a few classes. Now, these are a few things that you do need for each smart object. Um, they can be reused, so uh, feel free to reuse them for other objects. But the first thing you'll need is a, uh, a behavior. Okay, so I'm going to search for gameplay behavior. And there we go, gameplay behavior. You can click on that top one there and click select. And we'll name this one SO test behavior. Open this up and you'll see what this looks like. So it's pretty basic. Um, all it is, is a place to decide what's going to happen when the AI goes to that spot. So for example, play an animation, which is quite a common thing you'd do. So this is what goes on in here. We'll come back to this in a moment uh, and talk about and how you set that up. The next one you're going to need is a behavior config. So when we search for that, you may have noticed there's one at the bottom called behavior config. So you're going to click on this and click select SO test config. And this one's a really, um, really basic uh, class. All you've got to do is open it up and decide what behavior class it's going to be using. And we're going to choose the one that we just made, the SO behavior, test behavior. And that's all, it's all you do. Yeah. So hit compile and save that. Okay. Next, we're going to create is a um data asset we're going to go to miscellaneous data asset and you're going to ch search for smart object definition i'm going to select this and do so definition test definition we call test definition and this is where you decide where this the slots go okay this is how you organize them and assign what they do um you can assign different behaviors to them if you want. But yeah, that's what asset is. So this is what we need to get started, these three things here. So we're going to get started off with the test behavior. Let's open full blueprint editor. And the main thing you'll be doing on here is in the functions override. So we can go to override, and you'll see there's a few here. We've got unfinished, for character porn, and just plain old unfinished. And untriggered, character and porn versions also included. And if it isn't clear what these actually do from their naming, triggered means it has started. Um, so when it starts doing this, so when it goes to sit down, uh, goes to the spot and reaches the spot, that's going to tr uh, trigger there. And on finishes when it's finished uh, doing that and you've declared it to be finished. 
So we're going to go on to Triggered Character. And on here, you're going to get the avatar, which is basically the character you're going to get from it. Uh, the con config that is uh, relevant to it. And the smart object owner. So the actor itself that owns the smart object. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to promote our avatar here to a variable. So access to it later on. Be quite useful to have. And then we're going to take it to plain animation. Okay. So if I drag this out here and do um, get skeletal, uh, no, it's called get mesh, isn't it? In a character, there you go, get mesh. And on the mesh here, we can do play montage. And you don't have to do a montage, you can literally do whatever you like. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so you could do for a thing, for example, where uh, the AI goes up to a door, pushes a button, and a door opens. And then they go through the door. So you do some pretty interesting things with it. So here we're going to choose a montage to play. Do I have any I can use? There we go. So I've brought in a chair sitting montage. Um, it's pretty basic. I can show you. It's just this. Yeah. And I'm going to close that. And take it to play uh, that. Okay. So once it's done that, we want to take it to end the behavior and say, look, we've wrapped up here. We've done our job. That's it. We're done. So if you search for end behavior and we'll plug this in incompleted and just in case it's a good idea to put it also in interrupted as well just in case the montage gets blocked by something and the avatar is going to be our avatar reference there okay and that is all you need so you have the function triggering it off and you have your bit in the middle that you want to do stuff with in this case we're playing a montage and over here we're doing end behavior and as I said, you could do whatever you like in the middle here. You don't have the end behavior right now. You can also do it later. You could do timers. You could do whatever you want to say the behavior has finished doing its job. So that is what we're going to do. Compile and save that. And we're going to close this. So now we need to go to our definition asset, which was this um, data asset thing that we made. So let's open this up. And you can see it looks pretty different from other data assets. Um, so on the right hand side here, you've got smart object definition. So you, this is where you define the slots and the behaviors of each slot. Um, and you've got some preview stuff up top here. And that's it really, it's pretty basic. Um, so we're going to go to slots here. We're going to add at least one slot and it appears like this. And here's quite good because it shows you which way it's facing, uh, it's orient uh, which orientation it has, uh, placement, so on. And on this slot here, uh, you can either name it if you want, you can give it uh, tags if you want, um, you can give it a, its own unique behavior, so you can have multiple slots, one with a different behavior than others. Yeah, so maybe you've got something that is like, um, they go sit on a chair, like a sofa, but one of the sofa seats reclines, that could be a slightly different behavior definition for that one slot there. But we're going to keep our simple and just do one. And we're going to go to default behavior definitions and add at least one here. Um, right, so if you don't see anything here, the config is missing, um, that can happen. Now, the reason why is because there's another plugin that you need to install, I believe. So if we search for smart objects and we're going to turn on um, gameplay behavior smart objects. Uh, yep. And restart now. And then with that restarted, if we go back to our definition, we can now see our smart object definition here. Okay, we can click on that, open it up, and then we can choose our config from the, the test config. Okay, which in turn has the behavior assigned to it. So there we go. And we hit save, and that's our definition done. So now we've got to actually create the actual object itself. So we need to create a smart object. So we're going to go into our folder here, create the blueprint class, go and we're going to choose actor. Um, and then we're going to go and call this one SO chair. Okay. And open it up. And in here you'll have that your mesh and other things in it. So let's just do a simple cube to sit on. That'll do. And we're going to, going to also have our smart object gameplay component. Uh, yeah, we'll attach it to the cube there. So this is our smart object. I'm just going to move it up a little bit. And over here on the right hand side, we define it with the definition asset, the one we just made. So 
So click on that and choose our test definition. And there you go, that's the spot it's trying to reach. So we can place this wherever we want, um, but you wanna make sure it's something they can reach um, inside their project. So when they walk over to it, they'll hit this spot here, for example, and then they'll start doing their sit down. Okay, so let's just bring this up a bit. I'm gonna bring that to 50, snap that up. And our smart object is now looking a bit better there. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, if you were to add like a sofa, for example, you could put three slots in your definition or just do three smart object components. You've got a quite a free reign to do what you want with that. So that's pretty good. Okay, uh, we'll compile and save that and close that there. And we're just going to place one in our scene here as our chair. And when you place it, you'll see the data definition of it appearing there. And if I rotate it, you'll see it sticks with it as we go. I'm going to turn off the nav mesh here for a while. Okay, so let's just put that there, for example. And what we're going to do now is create a simple behavior tree to tell our guy over here, our AI, to go and sit and uh, down on that chair. So let's create a behavior tree for this one. And obviously you can implement this inside other behavior trees. You don't have to do it all separate, um, but I'm doing it separate so you can easily see what we're doing here. So we're going to do um, a, a SO behavior, we'll call it. And we're going to do a blackboard as well. SO blackboard. And we're going to open up our Blackboard here. So when you bring in Smart Objects plugins, uh, you're going to go to New Key and notice a new option. You've got SO Claim Handle. Okay, so Smart Object Claim Handle. You're going to click on this and assign it to your um, Blackboard. Okay, so I'm just going to call that as it is, SO Claim Handle key, um, and leave it like that. Um, and then that will do it for now. Um, and in the next part, we'll continue on with the behavior tree and putting in the behavior for him to walk over here and sitting down. So see you in the next part. So there you go. Our smart objects are all set up and ready to go. We're now going to do in the next episode the actual mechanical part of getting them to f walk over and use a chair um, and, and, and sit down, basically. So in the next episode, you can find that over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. So a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.